Alright, making a video. Yes, I do have officially a terrible, horrible, horrible, probably common cold. <laughs> but anyway, it really does suck. So I thought I would uh, have to still do some chores. I'm just making them a minimum. But anyway, um, um, so there's going to be, I'll probably do a few videos on this subject. Just because this is really the whole ball game. Um, you know, this conversation about the reality of the idea of value, uh, the concept of it, be meaning something, being real, being something that uh, is as real as uh, the difference between the moon and the earth, the difference between a, a galaxy and a, a nebula, nebula. Um, and that it's a real thing, that, that this idea that something could be in a condition um, where it is generating something that can have some kind of real uh, negative substance. And uh, so the Meyer Mystics made a video. I'll play his video and dissect every word of it. And uh, because I think the language in his video was so sloppy, um, you know, that it provides the opportunity for why this has to be a, this has to be done really carefully and, and really um, in depth. You know, it's going to take a while to, 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 to break down the language and to get it into a form that can be understood, that it's meaningful in this, um, it's, um, it can't escape um, the boundaries of reason and logic, that it is undeniable in a way um, by something that would be called intelligent, that it would have to recognize the distinction, like the difference between a living mouse and a dead mouse, side by side. Uh, they have 99.99999% of what's happening is identical, and it's just that tiny little difference. One has the beating heart, one doesn't. One has an electrical signal to the heart, the brain is fed with blood, there's neurological electricity happening, and it's having a sensate experience. Consciousness versus unconsciousness. And that this consciousness thing isn't just nothing. It's not just a rock rolling down a hill. It's different than unconsciousness. And it can't be just pretended away as if it's just the same thing. It's like the distinction without a difference. That there's a difference, but somehow the difference doesn't matter. That the difference is um, in, non, non, uh, that the difference is non, non significant is what I'm, what I'm saying, but I don't mean to say it uh, insignificant or uh, that, that it isn't um, noticeable, um, and that it would have a, a categorical uh, statement that could be written. Um, a, a, that can be qualified with statements that would be truths about the character of that difference um, and the meaning of the words that we can use to describe the difference. So we could say it's capable of being harmed as, the, as one of the categories of difference. Uh, it's now manifesting uh, a condition that can be sentiently negative bias, that it can feel something repulsive, that it can create the illusion of pain, the illusion of repulsion, the illusion of inside of a brain space. And the creation of that, although it is a, the pain is synthesized, the value is again the key word. So that was a key thing wrong with the mystic's paraphrase of my argument was he used the word pain instead of the word value. Uh, <clears throat> because obviously the, the mechanism of the function of our brain is generating 
uh, you know, a projector and a screen. Uh, it's generating an internal device that, uh, you know, is not in this world. It's in this interior, this, this, this brain illusion space. It's, uh, but, but the fact that it's happening, it is running, and the fact is, is that's what I'm sort of arguing. This doesn't mean anything. This brain space does because it has put value onto things. It has valued uh, them with this idea uh, of repulsion and attraction, uh, with this idea of comfort and discomfort, this idea of pain and pleasure, and these, I, these ideas, these things, these experiences, uh, can't be, in my opinion, rationally discounted as being rock. Rock is very different than conscious experience. Uh, you, you can't reduce it to its parts and then say it's nothing because the parts are nothing. Again, that's like doing that to an airplane. You can look at the parts and say none of the parts fly. Well, of course none of the parts fly, right? But of course the plane does. And flying is something, not nothing. And being conscious is something, not nothing. Being conscious is different than being unconscious. Substantially different. Uh, magnitudes of difference. Scales. You know. Um, and this uh, philosophy of these people, um, who are the true, I guess, the, the, the reductionists that go way too far and take away the flight of the plane by, you know, breaking the wings off um, and saying, see, the parts don't fly. That kind of reductionism is uh, just a rationalization. You want to pretend planes don't fly. You want to believe planes don't fly. So, yeah, the simple solution is break off the wings and then the plane can't fly. And to break off the significance of the difference between alive and dead, conscious and unconscious, to kill those differences by saying they're just arrangements and all arrangements are equal, all arrangements are irrelevant, is just an evasion in my opinion. It's just a way to evade recognition that flight is possible, that value creation does happen through the experience of sentient consciousness, uh, that it is an event unlike any other event. Um, flight is rare, not common. Flight is complex, not simple. Uh, and likewise, value creation requires the creation of a mechanism capable of creating this illusion of projector and screen. This, uh, again, the word illusion, you know, obviously it has a taint of fake. It's not that it's fake. It's that it's not made materially. It doesn't exist materially. It exists as a consequence of arrangement, just like the flight itself. Uh, you know, flying doesn't have any meaning in a still photo because you lose all of the aerodynamics. But it has meaning when there's movement and time. And the same kind of argument could be made about consciousness. Uh, yeah, if you take a still image of it, it doesn't exist. But if you see the projector rolling, the screen bright, uh, it's happening. I'm conscious. I'm experiencing it. You're not going to be able to convince me 
that a rock is doing what I'm doing right now. That the two things are the same. That there's no difference between one molecular arrangement and another molecular arrangement. That there's no difference between me dead, me alive, me conscious, me unconscious. There's obviously a difference. There's undeniably a difference. Uh, and uh, the conversation is about, now let's see what that difference is. And uh, I don't see there's any way to uh, convert the difference into nothing. Uh, and people do this so regularly. I said the idiot Snake Pliskinus was making some video I should respond to where uh, he, go, he, he starts making the argument that why don't vegetarians or vegans care about plants? And they're just like, you can't be this stupid, right? You really just can't be this stupid to ask a question that dumb. It's like saying, why don't we care about corpses being in the ground in the graveyard? Yeah, because they're dead. They're not conscious. They can't be harmed. Duh. I mean, the fact that the mystic is talking uh, in a manner so parallel to that kind of preposterousness, that kind of level of insipid uh, rationalization. I'm not accusing him of being a rationalizer. Maybe he sincerely thinks, uh, you know, complexity and arrangement, being alive, truly is a nothing. Uh, consciousness is truly a nothing. Uh, maybe he sincerely believes that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Snake Pliskinus doesn't watch is the difference. Uh, pointing out the, the clear rationalization he's making. Um, the, the obvious logical implication of such a silly notion of eviscerating value as a reality, uh, as a substantive thing we discover to exist, we recognize to exist. Uh, when you say it doesn't exist and that we're not recognizing its existence, then you're basically saying it doesn't matter uh, you could have six trillion Jews in a concentration camp, or six billion, or six, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you pay a zillion dollars for an ice cream cone, or five cents. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many people are tortured. It doesn't matter how many people are killed in a war. It doesn't matter how many people are burned to death. It doesn't matter how many people have their skin pulled off and are raped. Or, I mean, it just... It's insane, from my perspective, uh, to accept that as a premise from my own conscious experience. For me to say it doesn't matter whether I have a peaceful walk down this path or I get molested and tortured, to say it just doesn't matter. Both outcomes are the same. There's no distinction between them that matters. There's no distinction that we could put in a category of important uh, vital, uh, is insane. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's just insane. You're saying I'm being duped by my own psychology into thinking pain is pain. No, it's pain. It's real. It happens to consciousnesses. This is just insane to have to explain to people who are experiencing it. Anyway, more to come and such. I have to blow my nose. Ah, but I made it. Um, I, I, yes, I have no patience for this right now. You know, I just don't need a cold now. Not that I need one ever. Not that it ever be a good time. But this just isn't a good time. Just isn't. Anyway. Till, um, you know, make some more videos later maybe. See how I feel. 
See how I do. See how the day progresses. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. blah. Maybe the walk home. Uh, but I'm just, you know, I'm already, I'm already defeated in the sense that I feel like shit. And I'm going to have to explain to somebody that feeling like shit is significant. That it's not a non-significant event. <coughs> amazing. Just fucking amazing. Anyway, till the next time, and such.